Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Ministry Monday, December 23rd, 2019. I'm Miss Fowl, and I'm coming to you from my handy dandy bedroom. And it's been uh, probably about two weeks since I've been on. And I'm still, listen, I'm still battling. If someone just came on. Hi, Denise. How are you, dear? Um, I've been very sick. I was in bed, which felt like two weeks, dragging um, chronic bronchitis. I have a breathing machine, a nebulizer, and all that apparatus stuff. And I don't like to take anything at all. But <clears throat> anyway, I had no voice. So... Thank you. So with that said, with no voice, I can't talk. And that's a rarity for me because I love talking. So, but I figured I'd come on about 15 minutes early because I just wanted to fill everybody in and just talk about a couple things that have happened in the last two weeks. And I want to start out, of course, with the handy dandy mug. And I'm not drinking coffee, I'm drinking tea. I switched from coffee from the summertime to tea in the wintertime. Just happens because I like chai tea and all that stuff. And I see a lot of people. Hi, Lou. How you doing, buddy? It's my buddy. But remember, God designed me, created me, blesses me, heals me, defends me, forgives me, loves me. That makes you and me a child of the most high God. It's been a while since I've been on. Hi, Mark. How you doing? You know, Mark, I just want to say thank you for all the posts that you do from I'm just going to say all over the world because it seems like you go everywhere and it's wonderful because I don't like to fly. Oh, well, <laughs> but it's not saying that I wouldn't go to some places. We have a lot of people coming on Richard. Wait a minute. I have to put my glasses on because I think, because I'm blind as a bat. Okay. Let me say Richard, my Richard's on Richard, Michael Brett. He's like a brother to me. We grew up all our lives together. Richard, I love you, and I hope you're doing well. Hello, Lynn. How are you? I am so glad to be on this Monday because I didn't know if I was going to because I really, I still have a little scratchy voice, the nose, which, and Richard told me, Val, make sure you rest and stay in bed. Um, hi, sweetie. <laughs> I love you, Richard, but I'm getting into um, a couple things. I was very sick. And I will tell you that this video was not planned for today's date. Hi, Mario. And I'm telling you this because most of you know my number is 23. 23 is God's number in the Bible. If you take the Trinity, which is three, grace, which is five, completion, which is seven, and eight, a new beginning. And if you add them all together, you get 23. 23 follows me since 2010, and there's a lot of significant meaning in that. However, today, uh, last Monday, when I said, you know, I can't do this because I couldn't talk, and it frustrates me because I get so many people saying, I can't wait for your next video. I can't wait for your next video. And I'm telling you, that fills me with so much joy because there is so much joy in giving kind words and helping other people. And that's what I live for today. I live for the Lord and to help as many people as I can. So anyway, as I was sitting there, I said, okay, well, I'm just going to do it next Monday. And I realized that today is chapter seven of my testimony. There is one more. When I cry, my nose runs too. There's one more. Chapter seven, seven in the Bible is completion. This is about where God brought me to completion. And today is December 23rd. 2019 seven completion it's all it's it's all perfect numbers and like i said before i love to say hello to everybody i appreciate you coming on live and taking the time and listening but i do go back later i don't listen to my video but i look at all of the um comments and i answer everyone and if there's any of you that have never had me answer a comment let me know because I do. I sit in bed at night. And that's another thing, New Year's resolution for me. I don't know what it is for you. I would love to know what everybody's New Year's resolution is. Everybody usually says they have something every year. Mine is not weight. It's not Weight Watchers. I'm just going to watch the food go into my mouth, okay? Um, I may join a gym. I'm not sure to go back to that. But I do know this. I am going to try to go to, to sleep earlier because I go, 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 go all day long with my business, the ministry, and now, I don't know if you know, but I started Lights of Truth, 
and it's kind of blowing up because people like these lights that I make. And um, so with all that said, you know, sometimes I feel like I have bags under my eyes and it looks like I need about a week's sleep. And it's because I sit up at night and that's when I'll go on my emails. You know, some of you have probably more than I do, you know, thousands. And I'm like, I can't get through this stuff. And I'm sitting up and I even have an alarm set to tell me when to go to bed. And it comes up down my phone. It goes, din, 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 like, you know, the lullaby song for the baby. And it says, go to sleep now. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And it's before I know it, it's 1.30 and I'm still up. So... I have to do something. Look, my eyes. I'm tired. No. So anyway, who came on? Hi, Chris. How you doing, honey? Hi, Leslie. Leslie, how the heck are you? Chris, I want you to know that your art is beautiful. And like I told you before, you should do a Facebook page all dedicated to the art that you do. Um, okay. So today, um, the testimony is going to be about completion, but I want to touch base on something. I want to ask everybody to please keep the Zangari and the Alestra family in prayer. Um, another one of my good friends, her name was Tammy Blair. She went home to be with the Lord, I believe it was last, um, it was Tuesday. Um, I've known Tammy since my children were born. Um, we were very close. When I came home, when Tammy reached out to me, I have her text that I never felt so much love. She just was so glad that I was home with my family. And she said, you don't know how many of us just really missed you. And then, you know, um, I realized because when I was home, many of my friends that I have said, you know, every time I had a situation or a problem, I went to grab the phone to call you, Val, and you weren't there. It was just a little bit more of a reminder of what our choices can do in life. They not only affect us, they affect everybody. And we have to remember that. So Tammy, um, she wasn't well. And um, I just want you to please keep the family in prayer. Gianna, um, your mom was very proud of you and your brother, Aunt. And I know that... Um, she loved you very much. She had a precious grandson. And I know that it never goes away. It just gets softer with time. And to think that, you know, to to have a loved one go home to heaven is is very hard for any of us because it's that selfishness. We want them to stay here with us. But in the interim of things, who are we to take away that glory from them for them to go home to heaven to Jesus Christ? If you don't believe that, then that's where you you won't have any peace. Um, I know the Bible. I know it in and out. It tells you where you came from, how to live, and where you're going. If you don't believe that, we'll agree to disagree. But I will say this. In the now. That's another part of my testimony today. Live in the now. This is the now. Right here. What we have right here. I don't know if I'll be here next Monday to give another video. I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. But I know that when the Lord takes me home, what I want is for a celebration. And what I want is to be remembered as a person who who loved each and every one of you to make you realize how, how much worth you are in life, the blood of Jesus Christ. With that said, you only have the now. Today is the day. If you have anything that's wrong with somebody, even if you're right, who cares? Make it right. Take the time to make it right. Doesn't You don't even have to apologize. Just say, can we please put this behind this because I, I love you. And if something happens to that person tomorrow, does it really matter? No, it doesn't because they're not here anymore. So I specify that to everybody because it should never take the death of someone to make you realize that it shouldn't life is so precious this Christmas hug everybody a little bit harder you know what I mean um, take the time to call somebody that's sick and shut in an elderly person something because the fact still remains we don't know when God's gonna take us home Gianna didn't know that last Christmas would be her last Christmas with her mother it's that example to show we have this Christmas. We may not all be here next Christmas. 
Today only happens once. Make it amazing. That's what I would tell you. Make it amazing. Um, so I'm going to put my eyes on here. Hi, Sam. Sam, I am. Eggs and ham. How are you, dear? Um, hi, Terry. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Merry Christmas to everybody, too. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Taylor. Um, so basically, again, like I'm saying, today only happens once. Make it amazing. And you'll have no regrets in life. No regrets. When you, when you do what you're supposed to do and you reach out to people and you say, look, you know, humble yourselves, get rid of the pride. The pride is what it destroys everybody. Well, you know, I'm right. He's wrong. She's wrong. I'm not doing that. Well, I'm glad Jesus Christ didn't do that because could you imagine if he would have looked at Pilate and said, look, dude, <laughs> I'm the son of the most high God. I don't know who you think you are, but you ain't putting me on no cross. Think about that. I'm certainly glad that he was silent and he didn't say anything because he knew the truth. When we know the truth, we don't have to keep reiterating it. We don't have to keep proving ourselves to anybody. That's what I did when I was in, when I was incarcerated. There was many times I stood in that courtroom and I was silent. Times where my lawyer asked me questions, I said, you already know the answer to that. I'm being silent. Because when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And you're not going to have no chains and bondage and, you know, having problems with people. I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand we have problems in everyday life. Everybody does. But, you know, when you look at what's important to you, what's important in life, it's not about being right. It's about what is right. So remember that. Remember that. Somebody saying something to me again? Let me see. Hi, good morning, Sam. How are you, dear? Sammy, Sammy. Well, that's Angie. I'm saying Sam, but Sam I am. Sam is the other one. He's my friend. And Sam, well, Angie, you know. Hi, Angie. How you doing, honey? Um, so anyway, uh, please keep, you know, the people in prayer. Um, there's a lot of people that are sick and sick and shut in. Say prayers for them. I hope everybody is enjoying these last couple days before Christmas. I'm sure that there's the hustle and the bustle and people are buying things. I'm done. I think I might, I still might go out today later, but, um, my sister, I praise God for my sister because she loves to rap. I don't like to rap. She likes to rap, so she does a lot of the rapping. And this Christmas is going to be really um, a lot of fun here because my grandson, Jonathan, is two and a half. Uh, Jaden is almost one and a half. And, you know, Jonathan, he, he, he doesn't really understand, but uh, Santa's been very, very good to him this year. And um, so I'm looking forward to Christmas Day with my grandsons here at the house. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I want to start getting into, because it is now 10 o'clock. Wow, that's right on the dot, too. I'm getting pretty good at this. Um, hi, Margie. How are you, dear? Hi, Sharon. I know I go like that. Look, because I can't even see it. Like, I have to go like this and look down here like this. Like that. Okay, so um, here we go. Completion. I always pray before I do these videos and I say, Lord, be my words because I don't rehearse them. And I think that's what makes the best video because it's off the fly. You're just saying what you want to say and it works, you know? So God is always um, my words. And this is about the completion part of my journey being incarcerated and what God did in my life. And I always specify this because if God did it for me, he will do it for you. I don't know where you are in your journey in life right now. I don't know, you know, where you're standing with God is, but I can tell you this. It's very simple because Jesus Christ already paid it on the cross. So you can't top that. So stop trying. Okay. Uh, being a Christian doesn't mean perfect. Being a Christian means that you're acknowledging that you are a sinner saved by the grace of God through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what it means. We all fall short. Romans 3.23 says, you know, we all fall short of the glory of God and the wages of sin are death. And um, Romans 3.23 and 6.23, it's the Roman road. Uh, very good. If you, if you have a Bible, read it. Uh, Romans 3.23, 6.23, uh, Romans 5.8. Um, you know, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You got to remember that. You know, Christ didn't die for us when we were perfect. 
that's how much love God had for every one of us. We were still wretched people. Do you know what I mean? We still are. All you have to do is look at all the posts of everything that's going on in this world. And that's what happens when you have a fallen wor world that falls away from God. I fell away from God and looked away and look what happened to me. But when I say that God can't change you when you're comfortable, it's because when everything's going great in your life and you have everything and, you know, we all have bills and everything, sometimes you don't have time for God. But that's the most important time to be thanking him all the time for what you do have, not for what you don't have. So when you're comfortable, God can't change you. But when you're really uncomfortable, I'll give you an example, me in a jail cell, everything ripped from me. No cell phones, no computers, none of that stuff. Let me tell you, I, I talk about it now, but if you think it's it's easy, it certainly was not. I mean, there was times where I was going, I can't do this. I can't do that. I need, oh my gosh, please God, get me out of this cell. No, Valerie, because you're going to sit there and you're going to be still, Psalm 46, 10, and know that I am God. And you were born with value and purpose. And it will unfold according to my plan for your life, not yours. And that's what he does with every one of us. When we keep having problems and we want to complain about everything, but what you really should be doing is praying about everything. When you have a situation that you're not sure of, bills, sickness, the list goes on and on. You should pray. And you should go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but you do. I don't know my future, but you do. He holds our future in his hands. And if you truly believe that, it's called faith in an almighty God. When you turn that around and you truly do that in your life, I'm telling you, God gives you the peace that surpasses all understanding that you can't explain it. Nothing makes you fall and crack. People who crack to a million pieces when something's happening in their life, oh, I can't handle this, and then they reach for drugs, then they reach for alcohol and everything like that, it's because they don't have the true peace of God in their heart. And there's people that are Christians that say that. You do not have the true peace of God in your heart when you when you crack into a million pieces. It shows your faith. My grandmother, when my grandfather was going through things where he wasn't going to be here long, my grandmother would just say, well, God's in control, Valerie. I still hear her voice. God's in control, Valerie. He's going to do what he's going to do. It's true. And when you look at life like that, the way God wants you to and intends you to, you get the peace that you need. And that's what happened to me after a while. The peace came upon me like no other. And like I said in my little description, it's not about me. It's not about you, Valerie. And I remember sitting in my cell saying, you know what? I'm getting ready to go to Clinton now. And now I'm going to say what I said in that cell. I said, you know, Lord, you're going to do with me what you're going to do with me. You've had me here for almost four years. I know that I've been doing your work and you're using me to help others. And I, I'm very humbled when people say, Val, you know, you saved my mom's life. You did this. You did that. No, God used me to do his work because I'm nothing without the Lord because I'm not that smart. He is the one who gave me all the wisdom and the words to state to these people, just like he is right now. And these are words from him to you. They're not my words. It's not my opinion because there's opinion and then there's man's word. No, there's opinion. I got that backwards. Not enough caffeine. There's opinion and then there's God's word. Big difference. Because I see people on the Facebook, not to get off of things, you know, where they're going back and forth. I always handle it with scripture because I've said to people before, well, that's your opinion and there's opinion, but here's what God's word says. And if you have a problem with that, you got to take it up with him. Uh, I'm not taking anything up with him. I'm just, uh, my total faith is a hundred percent in God. So now I'm getting ready to leave Salem County and I got up to Clinton state. And when I was up at Clinton state, God used me there too, in a place that was kind of like, 
Now, I know people who were there are going to, you know, kind of like reminded me of like a college campus, kind of. I'm going to be honest with you. And, um, excuse me, and a lot of girls up there, rough around the, you know, collar and, you know, tough, you know. But like I said, they all became my friends. They were very, very good to me. Very, very respectful. Uh, I mean, there would girl, be girls standing next to me that would use profanity. And I, Brooke, I love you to death. And Brooke would always look at me and it was so funny. She'd go, sorry, Miss Val. And she would yell, <laughs> she would yell it. And I'd be like, it's all right, dear. Because I called everybody dear. And every time I saw her, I'd go, hello, dear. Well, Brooke and I fell in love with each other because she's just, she's my girl. And there's a lot of them. Um, I have one of my girls, uh, Morgan. I give first names only. She is being released on January 15th. She had a situation like mine, not as bad as mine. And um, it's almost six years and she's going to be coming home. And the excitement, you know, to be free. And I know this girl very, very well. Gigantic heart. I love her dearly. So I'm so excited to talk to her. But anyway, so as God was using me, I realized at one point when I was at this place, and many of you that know me, if you would have saw me and then had a video or a movie of where I was at, many of you would say, there is no way Val is going there. There is no way. Well, yes, I did. And I received a lot of letters from people, and you know who you are, that said, if anybody can make it in a place like that, it's you, Val. And... That meant a lot to me when that was stated because they said, you're strong, you're strong. But I didn't realize how strong I was until this all happened. And it made me strong enough. And I'm, and I'm glad, like, I don't take it back. There's someone who had just said to me recently, I wish I could turn back the hands of time. I don't. Because everything that I went through that God allowed me to go through was something that was a learning experience for me to better myself but also to help other people. I'm sure many of you can understand this. You know, you're going through something and you'll say to, you know, you'll look at people and be telling them and someone will say to you, oh, I understand. Uh, you don't understand unless you've been through it. If you haven't been through it, you don't understand. You can say, you know, I don't understand, but I'm here for you and I pray for you. Just remember that. Don't even use the words, oh, I can't imagine. You can't imagine. Someone that has had a loss of a child. If you haven't lost a child, you don't know the feeling. You can try to grasp it, but you can never understand that. So with God allowing me to go through everything that I've gone through, when I talk to a girl, well, I've been incarcerated. Well, so have I. Well, I tried drugs. Well, so did I. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on. So I don't, you know, I don't regret any of that because it, it was a learning experience and it felt like seminary for me when I was away. So... God was still working on me even when I was at Clinton and dealing with all of the girls that I did. I created bonds and relationships and Heart of Compassion Ministry just isn't for, you know, jail and prison. It's for anybody that would need anything that would have a problem if they reach out to me. And I can only do so much and I leave it in God's hands. But um, through all that, this is how these things came about. And I am in touch with many of these people. There is something called jpay.com. If none of you know about it, it's something that you can get. And all you have to do is have a person's SBI number. You can have the list. My list is so long. And, you know, I just sent all my Christmas cards out. And, you know, I'll send out emails once in a while just so you know that I'm thinking of you and I'm praying for you. And they're very appreciative of it. So, if any of you out there do have somebody or you know somebody that's incarcerated, that could be incarcerated for a while, just be there for them. It's nothing to pick up a card and put a stamp on it. it it's not. So just know that when you are incarcerated, I don't care what your charges are. I don't care what you've done. I'm not your judge. But I do know this. You're still a human being with a beating heart, and that's how I feel about anybody. And when you do something like that, whether you're incarcerated or not, you don't even have incarcerated. There's people out there that, you know, you should just send a card to just say thinking of you. It just, it just makes somebody's day. Kindness goes such a long way. So anyway, back to what I was saying. So I realized at one point when I was in Clinton, 
you know, wow, this, this whole situation wasn't about me. And that's why I always said I was incarcerated for Christ. And that's something that I want to be put in my book in reference to the title. Because God knew that he was saving my life, but it was the way he went about it and allowed it. Um, and he knew that by putting me in a place like he did, he needed light there, which is his word. And his word is a light and it's truth. That's where lights of truth comes from. Woohoo! So anyway, um, I realized that when God wants to work on you, there's many people. My cat Samson is. I have to let him out. There's. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, there's many people out there. I'll give you an example. You know, Val, I'm praying all the time. You know, Val, I don't understand why God's allowing this. Why is this happening to me? Nothing goes right. Listen to those words, nothing goes right. Well, I'm a perfect example of that. And I'm going to tell you right now, being a Christian doesn't mean everything is perfect. But I will tell you this. When you say nothing's going right, look in the mirror, look at yourself first, and then look at how you've been living your life maybe the last week last two weeks, three weeks, year? And here's the question I would ask you. Does your life bring honor, praise, and glory to your heavenly father? Think about that. Start from your thoughts to the words that proceed from your mouth. I know girls when I was in county, Miss Val, I'm praying all the time, and next minute she's over in the corner, effing this, effing that, Jesus Christ, God damn, everything you can think of. And I'm like thinking to myself, wait a minute, God's not going to be mocked. And I'm thinking to myself, that doesn't bring him honor, praise, and glory. You're supposed to live your life as a light for God every day. Okay, we all fall short. If I get really, 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 really mad, I mean, really mad, I will fly with some profanity. There has been time. Yes, there has been times, and I, I do. But I always ask the Lord for forgiveness, and I do not make it an everyday part of my life. I don't because of God, not because of any of you, my kids, or anybody that, because I'm not here to please anybody else, and that's how you're supposed to view life. You're not here to please other people. With your, you're here to please God. So some people think that's cool, you know, talking like that all day long, like I'm tough and stuff like that. Listen, I don't even have to say the F word to be tough. I don't have to use any of those words. I choose that because I know that in Matthew 12, 36 and 37, thank you, Lord, he just brought that to me. You know, and Jesus said to them, I tell you this, at the day of judgment, every person will be accountable and judged for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> that means anything. So we're always supposed to speak with seasoned salt. We're supposed to be uplifting. We're not supposed to tear people down. So anyway, that's what I would ask you. Back to what I was saying. Ask yourself the question. It's not about anybody else. We are nobody's judge. Do my words, do my actions, does my life bring God glory, honor, and praise. Ask yourself that. And I apologize because my nose is still running. And if you can answer that and say, you know, yeah, I really, I, well, I really think I am. Most will say, I'm not. Change that first before asking. You know, God says, you know, ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will be opened in Matthew 7. Seek and you will find me. And you will find me in Jeremiah, it says, when you seek me with all of your heart. When we pray, Lord, please help me with all these bills. I don't know what I'm going to do. Lord, my car. Lord, you know, I need that. Lord, Lord. God already knows what you need before you ask. So when I was incarcerated, when I was in prison, when I was upstate, I didn't know when I was going home yet. I changed my stinking thinking, you know, not to be about me. That's why I said it's not about me. It's not about you. Change it 
God already knows what you need. He wants you to remove you and think of everybody else. You know why? Because you already have God. God's got you. He's got your back. He's already got you. He knows what you need every day. But it's when you take that selfishness off and you go to him and you say, Lord, please help my friends that, you know, any one of them that were watching my video today. I know that there's a lot of burden hearts, people missing people. I know that my friend Chris misses his mother very, very, very much. But I know where his mother is. And I always say to Chris, you'll see her again. And I ask for the Lord to touch hearts of everyone out there so that they live for him. And that if there's anybody that's, you know, grieving right now, my girl T, you know, this will be her first Christmas without Mary, her mother, my girl, Mary, she's so missed. I ask for him to comfort people that need it at this time of the year, especially the Zangari family and the Alestra family, you know, to have anybody go home at is hard but at christmas time the holidays i believe that it makes it even rougher so when you take your focus off of you and realize that it's not about you you really start having purpose in life when you give yourself and and make something more important than yourself which is other people which is other people so that's what I did when I was in Clinton. I did everything I could to help other people, share the word of God. I taught girls how to color. I sat with girls and showed them how to sew. Um, there was girls I helped write letters for, you know, to, you know, judges. There, The list goes on and on and on. And it gives you such self-worth. You know, I always tell people that, you know, things bring temporary enjoyment, even money, temporary. But when you give somebody your time, you give them self-worth, just like your children. I tell people all the time, don't give your kids everything under the sun and buy them everything under the sun. Toys and things bring temporary enjoyment. But when you give of yourself, it gives them self-worth. I totally believe that. So that's when God will work on you and your situation. He will work to where you'll be able to handle your situation. You're either going to handle it with the way the word of God tells you to handle things. Trust in him. Don't lean on your own understanding, Proverbs says. Trust in him with all your heart and he will direct your paths. That's what it says. Roman, what is that? Proverbs 3, chapter 3, 5, and 6. Thank you, God. You just came to me again. So I'm trying to explain to you that when you're comfortable, things are going great in your life. God can't really work on your heart. There's people that are Christians. Everything's going great, but you know they're praising the Lord every day and thanking them for what they do have and not what they don't have. But we have a lot of people out there, and I know some of them, and I've talked to some of you, that you wonder why your life is crazy and all over the place, but you have no time for God. You have no time to pray for Him. Um, go to church. Uh, we do not have to go to church every Sunday. That's not how you get into heaven, but you should want that fellowship. You should want that time with other people because your church family is the best. I'm telling you, church family can be better than your own family because it's not about that because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. It makes us all a family. And when you turn your life around to take the focus away from yourself, it's called meism. There's a lot of people out there, which I'm sure you know some. I do. Meism. It's all about me, what I can do, what I can get. Uh, you know, let me see what I can get from this person. It's sad, but there's people out there like that. Um, I'd like to believe that none of you that are watching this video are like that. And if you are, we need to change that. Um, so really contemplate and meditate on what I told you. I feel my voice going. <clears throat> Take the focus off of you. Think of others. Pray for others. God already knows what you need. That's what I did. 
And each and every day that I got closer to coming home, God was bringing me to completion here on earth. We will never be fully completed until we stand before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we have a body like his, and we are all reunited as one. Um, that's going to be an awesome day. That's why when God takes me home, don't cry. Some might not cry, but what I'm saying is it's a joyous occasion. I'm going to ask you to please live your life for the Lord because I'm going to be waiting for you. So when you get there, I'm going to be like, what's up? You know what I mean? It's took you long enough to get here. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm going to be waiting for my loved ones to cross over to come see me. But you never know. The way the world is going today, my grandmother said something to me before she passed away. I'll never forget it. We were in her living room and she said this to me. You know, Valerie Gale, I still see her. She's taking her finger. She would always go like this. You need to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. She said, I'm not going to see the second coming of Christ, but I believe you're going to be here to say it. She said that to me. And that's always stuck here because what a wonderful day that will be because the trumpets will shout. I wrote a song and it's up on my YouTube channel. It's called The Lord is Coming Quick. And if you haven't seen it, please go to my YouTube channel. Listen to the words of that because the words are deep. So anyway, God brought me to completion to know that, Valerie, be still and know that I am God. And he also explained to me that death is a part of this life. But for the Christian, it's not death. We are just changing our address, like Billy Graham said. And remember, this all started when my grandfather passed away. I went over here. I didn't handle things the way I was supposed to because I didn't have the true peace of God in my heart. My house was built on sinking sand. That's in Matthew. It wasn't built on solid rock. I'm on solid rock now. Nothing will crack me. Nothing will break me. Nothing will shatter me. Things happen. I handle things so differently now than I did before I got incarcerated. Nothing. Oh, well, it's okay. You know, God's in control. God will handle it. God will show me. And someone said to me, well, you know, God don't pay your bills. Oh, let me tell you something. The job, everything you have in life is from God. Don't ever forget that. So when someone says, well, you know, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills if I don't go to work every day. Well, sh well, sure, but if that's what you believe, if you believe that your life is from God and everything comes from God, watch what God will do for you. Blessings rain down when you wake up every day, but people don't get it, and that's what I'm trying to have people understand. You need to get this. You need to get this. It's not about you. And when the Lord was bringing me home and I got picked up by uh, Jeff and my son, Jeffrey, uh, there's a little video clip that's up on that on my Facebook timeline too. It's like 12 or 15 seconds. It's very short because my son dropped the phone and um, it was very intense, uh, very intense. As I was driving in that truck, I have to tell you, the first place I went to was McDonald's. I didn't ask. Jeff says, do you want to go to McDonald's? I had to go to the bathroom. And I will tell you that when I got out of that truck and I was walking into McDonald's, I was not walking in there like a normal person. If you probably would have saw me, you would have said, are you okay? I went into the bathroom. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have anybody. Like I was waiting to hear count up, you know, get back in your bunks. And it's, 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 it's mind altering. Trust me. As I ate, I will tell you that I felt very sick to my stomach because, oh, um, when I got home, the adrenaline that was in me walking into this home, I wish everybody could experience that because I went to the church first before I came home and I fell to my knees before that cross in that church. And there's a picture up of me doing that. Um, because I just wanted to thank God for everything that he did for me, in me, through me, making me fit for Christ. Who's ever sending me all these hearts, I love you too. Trust me when I tell you. God prepared me for such a time as this right now. I'm so thankful and grateful to him. I am so thankful and grateful to each and every one of you. I will be home for a little over two years now. 
I can't tell you the outpouring of love and kindness that have, has come from every one of you that are on my Facebook account. Listen, people can say, well, you don't have that many friends. Maybe not. But I know that every person that's on my account has been very, very nice to me, has shown me nothing but love, support, do this vow, I'm behind you, do the lights of hope, everybody. I've not had one person say anything negative to me. All the comments that you sent to me, I read every one. They uplift me every day. So what I try to do is return it to uplift every one of you to know that where I'm at in life, I love myself today as a person and God is still working on me, but God loves you too. And I want each and every one of you to know that today is the day. Now is the time of salvation. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray that you would please get into a Bible-believing church. Accept him as your Lord. Know that he is real. Know that he is the King of Kings. And he is in control of this world, not Donald Trump or anybody else. And remember this. I will say this. I try not to bring politics into it. But I will tell you this. No matter who is in our office, no matter what, do you believe that God is in control? That's the question. If you say yes, then we're going to understand that God is in control and God has Mr. Trump in that office just like he did Obama or anybody else because he has a plan. It's a purpose and a plan to bring this world to where it's going to be for him to return and say, now, now you're going to listen to me because he is the one true king. So it doesn't matter who is in office. Yes, we have to fight the good fight as Christians. But what I'm saying is, whether it be Trump or anybody else, I just don't think people should do mudslinging and tear anybody down because if we say there's so many people i hear say well i'm not their judge but then i see what they say about a person well he did this 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 and this and i just want to go I, and i don't but i want to put on there and say well what have you done i don't know nothing so that's why i can't do this because <laughs> listen i can't point my finger at anybody <laughs> look at me you know but it's with anybody it's with anybody. And, you know, I, I disagree with a lot of things as Pelosi. You know, I disagree with a lot of things, but God's in control. And trust me when I tell you, he's going to put in office who he wants to put in office. He's going to do with my life with what he's going to do with my life. And I tell him every day, I'm yours, Lord. What do you want to do with me today? What do you want to use me for? And it's always to talk and help other people. I could go to Ross, which I know I have to run to Ross. I'll meet somebody standing there talking to me and I don't know it just happens this person I don't even know and they'll start saying well you know and then I know God's saying talk to her and I do so I'm hoping that every one of you um, are enjoying these videos please support my YouTube channel because you'll be supporting the Word of God when you pass that on to people you truly are you're not passing me on you're passing on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it doesn't get any better than that. Trust me when I tell you. So God brought me to a place of completion and made me realize it wasn't about you, Valerie. It was about me saving you lo your life and molding you into the person that you were supposed to be since day one because you looked away from me. Just like other people in the Bible looked away from the Lord, but he can redeem anybody. Remember, anybody. Doesn't matter who it is. I don't even care if you're in prison for the rest of your life. He can redeem that person. And don't say he can't because anybody that puts limits on our God does not serve the God of this universe. And this is where he brought me. And this was my completion to bringing me home. And my next video, which I'm not sure if it's going to be, I believe December 30th is a Monday. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if I'm going to be on on Monday. I may do a different video, um, but I'm going to come back after the first of the year, and I'm going to do my last video in reference to my testimony, which is going to be chapter eight, a new beginning, because eight in the Bible is new beginning. And I will share that with you. And I pray for every one of you, and I do, 
when, I, when you know, you have a lot of people say, well, I'll keep you in prayer. Do you really keep people in prayer? Do you really pray to God about them? I can tell you that I do. Every night when I lay down on this bed, I say, Lord, every one of those people that were on my video today, that were, were talking to me, that had questions, please help them with whatever they need. God knows every one of you. He knows every hair on your head, numbers of hair on your head. So with that said, I hope that my prayer for you is that come in the new year, 2020, that you stay more focused on the Lord than yourself, more focused on doing what is right and not caring about who is right. And knowing that your kindness, your words, your smile can change somebody's life. Just a hug. It'll all be okay. My nanny said that to me all the time. And it's very hard this month because uh, my grandmother passed on my daughter's birthday, which Natalie will be 23 this year. But my nanny passed on her 17th birthday in 2013. So this month is a little hard um, because I reminisce when I'm by myself and I'm driving and I'm downstairs in my sewing room and I'm thinking about everybody. I think about her so much and I try not to stay at a grieving point. I try not to because I know where she is and I know that I will see her again. And as you can see, I have this picture right here. This was my grandmother's 80th birthday at the church at Fellowship Bible Church. And I remember this day like it was yesterday. So, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry. Thank you for all the love and all the hearts. And my nanny is up in heaven and she's saying, keep going, Valerie. Keep going. Just like I'm going to tell each and every one of you, Chris, your mother's in heaven. Gianna, your mother's in heaven. Truly believe the word of God. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on and keep looking up. And I'm going to end this video. Oh, where is my tissue? I do not know what to do with it. Um, it's okay. I'm going to end this video with a song that I wrote when I was in County and it's called The Gift. Now I'm going to read most of it because of my voice. Uh, when it comes to the chorus, I am going to sing the chorus. I'm getting so many hearts across my screen. Um, Okay, um, so let me let me read this to you. Hi, Joanna. How are you doing? Tracy, Dorothy, Kathy, oh, so many people. I want to read this to you, and I pray that you will like this. I am going to put this up to share for people, but this was my first Christmas song that I wrote, and it um, means a lot to me. Listen to the words. It's the words. It's not about my singing, because I can't sing worth anything right now, but... It just came to me and I said, Lord, I wrote this December 25th, 2015. I said, I would like to, to write a Christmas song for you. I love every one of you. My gosh, all the hearts. I just, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> so um, this is called The Gift. Listen to these words. And when I get to the chorus, I'm going to try to um, do a little bit of the chorus for you. And I know the Lord's got plans for all these songs that I wrote, all these words that I wrote. I know somebody's going to come along and want to work on these with me. I just know. I just know God's going to do that. So this is called The Gift. Listen to these words. We don't need a tree or all those fancy lights. Jesus is the one gift who makes everything bright. All the running around just for one day when everything was found in a manger far away. The meaning of Christmas, what would you say? It's not about reindeer, that man Santa, or a sleigh. It's life and love all wrapped into one, this precious gift from God, Jesus Christ, his son. It's for you and me, no money, it's free. Will you accept the gift of Jesus Christ, eternal life, hills all will ever need? So look, no more, he's not in a store, on a shelf or under a tree, but lives in the heart of every man who accepts the gift and believes.
Take the time to kneel and pray for those who need Christ today. This gift for us was born to die upon a cross for you and I. So at this special time of year, share the gift of Christ far and near. If we take Christ out of Christmas, what would it be? There'd be no meaning at all, nothing more than a tree. It's for you and me, no money, it's free. Will you accept the gift of Jesus Christ, eternal life? He's all we'll ever need. So look no more, he's not in a store, on a shelf or under a tree, but lives in the heart of every man who accepts the gift and believes. That's it. So I hope you enjoyed that. I want to say Merry, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. I love you. I'm so grateful for your support. Please, again, so many of you are sharing my YouTube channel, and I know who you are. If you would please keep supporting me on this, um, I'd appreciate it. I hope that you know you have a safe week. If I don't talk to you, of course, before the new year, um, a safe and happy new year. Please be very careful out there, and I hope that you will comment, um, and I'm going to put a thing up, I think, you know, just to ask everybody, what is it that you would like to change in the new year about you yourself? Um, I love you all. Again, thank you so much. I'm going to go now. I have a lot of things to do. There's a lot of hearts coming through, and just know that I'm very grateful to every one of you who have supported me that never looked away never turned away. Joyce, Kathy, Kristen, Patty, so many. There's just too many to name. Holly, the list, like I said, there's just so many of you and I'm grateful. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just grateful. I'm getting lost for words now. So I'm going to go. Merry Christmas to each, every one of you. And remember, keep on keeping on, keep looking up and make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Bye-bye.